Welcome, I'm Kira Scrivener, and today I'm going to be reacting to my very first haul. This is a May-June haul from 2017, and I am stilted, like, so stilted and awkward, and you can tell it and everything. I've always been quiet, and I always thought when I first started booktube that I had to be super animated, because I'm not animated, and yeah. I kind of gave up with that a little while, but this is the beginning. I also wanted to recreate how I looked in that one, except for the fact that it's way too hot to wear, like, a cardigan. How is he wearing a cardigan? That was because I was really insecure about my arms and, like, everything else in my life. And I think that that's a big part of, like, when people are starting out, I felt so insecure. I felt like I couldn't talk well. I thought I wasn't, like, the way that I animated myself, the way that I talked was not right. And I also thought that I had to buy a ridiculous amount of books. Thankfully, they were all thrift books, which meant that it was cheaper, but still. I want to, like, assuade every one of the things that they don't need to buy all the books at the beginning. Because most of these books I enjoyed, most of the books <laughs> I loved, but a lot of the books that I bought because of pressure didn't, or I read because of pressure, I didn't actually like. And also I had to, like, take so many different things because I was speech impediment and I tried to cover it over really, really well. Anyways, what are we talking about? My editing for this video and why I haven't done this video because I've wanted to do it for like every anniversary ever <laughs> is because my editing is crap. I've still figured out a way to do it but it won't be exact editing so we're gonna have some awkwardness. So first off I'm going to talk about the book that I first had which is the graveyard book. This is a book that you just wrote a clip because that's what I'm gonna do. Anyways. <laughs> that I don't read like ever. I don't know if I've actually read a full book from this genre before. So that would be Paranormal, I'm like The Graveyard Book by Neil Gaiman. It's about a boy who was raised by goats. Anyways, <laughs> I said I've never read Paranormal, and I still haven't really read a lot of Paranormal. That's not really my stuff, it never has been, but this book was just okay. Neil Gaiman has this place in my life where I've read like the vast majority of Neil Gaiman books, but most of them haven't been like loves of mine. Like I really like Stardust, it's probably one of my favorite books, but outside of that, like his books are mostly like three, maybe four stars, but three stars. <laughs> and yeah, I think I think that's where he lives in my life. But I think that a middle grade book with ghosts, if you like that stuff, you should read it. But Dream Thieves by Maggie Stravatter. Yes, that's my butcher of her name. It's the second book in the Raven Boys cycle. Um, I haven't read the first one, so because I bought the second one, I have to read the first. Remember those good old days when I couldn't see Maggie Stravatter's name? Oh, those great days. So, The Dream Thieves, otherwise known as The Raven Boys, I have read The Rachel Cycle twice. I read it twice in 2019. I adore this series. It is great. This is my least favorite out of all of the books, and it's still the only one I own. Mostly because I don't love the protagonist, but I love the fact that there's no plot. I love that it's mostly character-focused. I love the writing and the, like, omnipresent shifting between narrations. <sighs> it's just what I need, even though I still haven't read a ton of paranormal and or like, I, I found out that through booktube that I really am not a huge fan of urban fantasy books that have fantasy that take place in our world. I'm, I'm a high fantasy girl. That, that's just who I am. Moving on to high fantasy, which is my favorite, so I'm not really sure why I only have two books. But I have The False Prince, which is about um, a kingdom that is in upheaval, and there is a prince that went missing many, many years ago, and now... Um, there's a noble who's trying to get four orphan boys to pretend to be that one and whoever wins gets to be the prince, the puppet prince that they can control. I was surprised by how much I liked The False Prince. I'm also surprised I read Three for Three and I read the whole series. The, first, the last two weren't my huge favorite but the first one is really really solid. I think it works better as a standalone because it has a lot of action, it has a lot of politics, it's great. It's on the border of middle grade and YA and then the other two try to balance out the action with the politics but the action part isn't really relevant so it feels a little bit more slow despite the fact that it's action but really recommend it especially if you're like younger getting into YA or you want like a little bit of middle grade magic back in your life. The puppet prince so they can control him. And I also got Malice. Um, this was a book that is massive. So Malice is still a big book that I have not read. It's funny because I picked this up because of Elliot Brooks, and one of the people I've been watching right since the beginning, and I read it because I heard about it on booktube, and then I haven't read it because of booktube. Because I think that I'm starting to finally get away from this, but there's a competitive nature, especially because I hadn't read a ton of books, maybe like 200 books or so before booktube, so I felt like I had to get like all up. Like I had to read all of the books I've never read because I hadn't barely read any YA 
previous to booktube and had not read that many classics so I was doing catch up and for the longest time I only read short books because I have I did I felt like I didn't have a right to talk because I hadn't read everything that was relevant and because of that Malice and other large large books mostly have gone on the back burner because well I could read one of them or I could read three little books so I'm really hoping to kill that in the future as I go forward I still haven't killed that completely my big <laughs> Uh, classic shelves, there are many of them that I haven't read, like I have I think eight Charles Dickens books and I've only read Carol, um, The Christmas Carol because it's a short one. So I really want to remedy that in the future, but that insecurity still lies in my soul. Two contemporary books by John Green, Fault in Our Stars, every human being in the world is heard of. Um, it's two star-crossed lovers, one has cancer, one is in remission. It's a really sad book. And then also by John Green, his, uh, his first novel, which is Looking for Alaska, about a boy who goes to a boarding school and then meets a girl named Alaska and his life is changed forever. It literally says that. So I really like John Green as a human, so I'm really excited to... I've already read The Fault in Our Stars, but I'm excited to read more books by him. I still love John Green better as a person than as an author. I've actually, I've been really stressed lately and I've been listening to the Andrews being review which is great because it's like his low-key nonfiction, and like in John Green style he takes things that are ordinary and gives them meaning and like wonder and like thinking about your way in the universe and I just I just adore it um and I love Vlogbrothers so much I have read half of Looking for Alaska and I have not finished it yet <laughs> so I need I need to go back to that I was actually thinking about this this week so this is a good timing and then I also have The Fault in Our Stars which I have read but I haven't reread I have read though the Fault in Art. Nope. <laughs> I have read Turtles All the Way Down, which is definitely up there in the top tier of my books, and especially for mental mental health representation, and just it says a lot of the things that I wish I could say and verbalize it, and he does such a brilliant job in that book. Just TBR list ever. It's Lullabies by Little Criminals by Heather O'Neill. She's a Canadian author, and if you don't know, I'm Canadian. Um, so it's about child prostitution, so beware if you read this book. But um, it just, it has a lot of messages and I really like books that talk about the real world and what real people go through. So it's set in Montreal, I believe, which is about only about an hour or two away from where I grew up. So, Lullabies for Little Criminals. I have not read this, but there is a reason. I, I was going through a lot of PTSD at the time, so picking up this book was not good. I am still very, very triggered by books, especially that deal with sexual violence. It's never something that I've been that okay reading and this is a book that I put off because of that and especially since it comes really close to home I feel still think it's a really important book but I need to be in the right headspace for it and I don't know honestly if that headspace is ever going to really happen. On to uh, classics. I bought To Kill a Mockingbird which I also read in high school but that was six years ago. I finished in grade nine. Um, it's about Scout who narrates the story about her father who is a white man um, defending a black man who was accused of raping a white woman. That is a lot of race in that one sentence, but it's good. You've probably heard of it. Yeah, I still haven't read about it and during conversations lately I've been thinking about how much it does actually stand out because it, it does upset me that, you know, the books that you read in high school that deal with racism all are written by white authors and there's so many other voices that just are not being heard and I'm hoping that that is changing as things go on. I know The Hate That You Give is read in some high school classes but like definitely wasn't when I was in high school and I still want to reread it because I still think that it's a really important thing for white authors to champion stories and people who have privilege to use their privilege for people to understand that but then we need to let loose and allow other voices to be heard as we progress to not just use my thoughts on racism to the most important things on racism because that's not true other people, especially people who have actually lived it, are so much more important to listen to than me or Harper Lee or anyone else. Hey, that rhymes. Hello, my name is Min Kobayashi, and today I'm going to do my second half of my May and June book haul. And also really exciting, there's light. This is my first video filming during the daytime. I have to use lamps and stuff so I'm not like pitch black. Anyways, that's really exciting for me, and I hope that you enjoy me talking about the rest of my books. So first of all, this is a book that I read a long time ago, but I figured out that I had the, you know, two and three, but I didn't have one. So that is The Hunger Games. 
Suzanne Collins. She, I really liked this book when I read it. I was only about 14 or 15 when I read it, so I'm not sure if I'll like it again. This is also a really good time. I said in this that I didn't know if I would still like The Hunger Games, and I think that's because I had a lot of insecurity about what did I like? Was I a good reader? Was I a critical reader back then? And in case of The Hunger Games, I was absolutely freaking right. I've just been rereading them. I have read the first two and I need to read Mockingjay and then The Ballad of Sunbirds and Snakes. So I'm really excited, but like I have like eight pages on Catching Fire. I have a million pages. They're annotated to the hilt now. And their, their conversation on themes, on identity, on sociology of like abuse and trauma, mental health representation and exploration of that is so freaking brilliant. These books do not get enough credit and yeah, I think that part of the reason why I felt having trouble saying that I liked them back then was because as a woman, I feel like I can't like romance. And I know that that is often broken apart, especially on this platform, but I still feel that bias that I, if I say I like romance, then I am just a cliche. And I know that needs to be beaten and I've gone on rants and I will go on rants when I make reviews for this when I finish the whole series, but yeah admitting truths here. Classics. I adore classics and I'm sad that I haven't read more. Then this book isn't necessarily a classic, but I put in classics things because it's set in classic times, which is The Book Thief, which is an extraordinary book and I've wanted to read for a really long time. I didn't realize it's been out for 10 years, which is ridiculous that I haven't read it yet. It's set in World War II when the book burning and it's about the love of literature which is something I can definitely get on board with. I love the fact that when talking about this, I didn't know what historical fiction was. This shows what, like, I, I knew reading, but I didn't know any terms for it, and that, that shocks me. Like, I called high fantasy, like, alternate worlds, because I was like, it's like our world, but a different world. <laughs> I didn't know terms. I didn't, I said it kind of like a classic, because it takes place in classic terms. Oh, here. Anyways, I didn't know things. Historical fiction <laughs> is the title of the thing. And I did not love The Book Thief as much as some other people. It's it's not one of my favorite books. I think I gave it 3.5 stars. I, I don't know if I would have preferred reading it in person if, like, because I read it on audio. I don't know if I would have preferred reading it when it was new and novel rather than having, like, a mountain of things telling me that it was going to be wonderful. I don't know. But I like it. It's not my favorite. Two Jane Austen books, Wits and Sensibility, and Northander Abbey which is amazing. It's literally making fun of all her other books. It tells the story of Catherine who falls in love and meets this million dollar guy and is like, this guy's really awesome. And then he invites her to her mansion. She's like, hey, I don't know you, but I'm pretty sure I'm in love with you and I'm gonna go to your mansion right now. And then she's like, holy crap, this might be a serial killer or something like that. So then she's like really suspicious. And then she's like, oh, reality and life isn't the same thing. I can't reality in life. Like, I understand there's horrible people in fiction, but it's also really awesome. Anyways, and then Sense and Sensibility by her, it tells the story of two sisters, one who is too practical and one who is too flimsical and does her own thing and falls in love, and the other sister is worried that she's going to ruin her reputation. It seems so, like, timely. This whole thing seems so timely because I've just been in, like, a Jane Austen thing. I've been in, like, a John Green mood. I've been in a... Hunger Games mood, this just seems very relevant. Okay, so Sense and Sensibility and Northander Abbey. I do not have the same follow through with Northander Abbey than I thought. I think that I expected it to be a little bit more like Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier, one of my new favorite books, but it was not. I think I also probably, this was also listening to it when I was getting used to audiobooks and I don't think that I picked up anything, but June, Jane Austen July is coming next month in like a few weeks and I'm so excited. And I'm going to be reading both of these, hopefully. I have never read Sense and Sensibility. It and Mansfield Park are the two books I heard that I have not read. But I'm really excited to read through maybe all of her works. I don't know. That might be a little <laughs> advantageous. But yeah, we are going to do this and I'm really excited. But I, I do like it. I still think it's funny and wonderful. It just, it didn't peak the full level of like thrilling and also humorous that I wanted. Finn or The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn by Mark Twain. He is an extraordinary good author. His prose aren't like, oh my gosh, it's amazing. It's very informal, which was very different in that era. I really enjoy his work. Um, I read Mark Twain. This book is about slavery and how um, human life, and it was written in 1884, which for that time, this book is an extraordinary anti-racism 
that makes me really excited. I don't need to repeat the sentiments I said about Harper Lee and To Kill a Mockingbird that I do about Huck Finn, but yeah, I read this one as well. I, I did really enjoy it. It didn't hit me because again, it's written in the 1880s. It has less of a stance on the whole conversation is because Huck Finn feels like he has a responsibility to return Jim because he is a slave. And that is what the law says, but his morality is saying that he is a human, which for us in 2020, we should not be actually really saying whether black people are human or not. However, I do think that this has some context here because it talks about civil disobedience and that's a big conversation in the world right now. Like is protesting, why would you protest? Why would you oppose the government? Why would we oppose police officers who are killing people because it's in their right to kill people by their badge? And I think that this does come into a conversation now that just because the morality of saying that this is what the law says, laws do not necessarily mean that they are lawful or that they are correct. And I love Civil Disobedience by David Thoreau. David, there's another word in there. Henry David Thoreau. I'm looking at the book back there. Anyways, um, yeah, I really, really love that. And I think that that has contextualization in there. Do I think that a book by a white male, written about a white male, talking to a white audience is the best book to talk about racism? No, but I think that it's important to see how people in the past have had raw morality and justified it by the law. So that makes me really excited. City of Ashes, which I can't tell you because it will be spoiled. So confession time. I still haven't gotten more than 200 pages into Mortal Instruments, the first one. I still really want to go through this and critique it and analyze it and have a conversation on things that are problematic, things that are good, why this is such a cornerstone in YA fiction and why so many people love it so much. I'm gonna do that for another time. I'm trying to read old books by a lot of black authors, by a lot of experiences and read really important books. And this isn't at my sale. I should probably read it before it gets my fifth anniversary of reading the first anniversary and being halfway through the first book. Yeah, maybe. Maybe that's a 2021 thing. I think I've said that since like 2016. Anyways, this is my point. Uh, I'll read it one time. It, it, will, it will happen, hopefully, maybe, I don't know. It will be spoiled. Miss Peregrine's House for Peculiar Children. And it's about Jacob who finds extraordinary. You ever have a book that you pick up because it's hyped, it's a, it's a book you really, really enjoy, it's a person you really like, and you pick it up and then it sits on your shelf and you're like, I don't really think I'm gonna like this book. And then you do pick it up because you're guilty and it's sitting on your shelf and then you enjoy it. This is me and Miss Peregrine's. I had watched the movie, I'd heard Jesse the Reader go on and on and on and on and on. And I was a very, very big Jesse the Reader fan when I first started BookTube. So yeah. I had it sitting on my shelf for a really long time and then I picked it up and I was like this is so good and then at the second one it was even better the third one was fantastic the fourth one wasn't quite as good as the fifth one but like still the series is gold it discusses so much I love the things my life was ordinary until the moment I realized it was extraordinary <sighs> I don't know it talks about a lot of things and I, I really endure it and it has such a cool magic system and like the portals the world age questions of morality I like it a lot. Jacob who finds extraordinary things. Harry Maguire. Confessions of an Ugly Stepsister. I am really wary about this book, mostly because, okay, one of my favorite things on the planet is Wicked, the untold story of the Witches of Oz, the musical. I adore it, I love it. I've heard nothing good about the book. It's the same author as that book. But this is telling the story of Cinderella. Stepsister. I thought it was during the time of the story, but apparently it's after, which makes me less sad because I would love to see the story of Cinderella told in a, from a bystander's point of view, especially an antagonist's point. And then we have the exact opposite where I didn't give a book a second chance. I, the longer I had Confessions of Ugly Stepsister sitting on my shelf, I was like, mm, no, I, I, don't, I don't think I'm gonna like it. So I unhauled it. I don't know all. I've unhauled, unhauled like five books and this is one of them. Paganist point of view. So I'm trying to read the Harry Potter, so I bought Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. I bought this one because this is also the Order of the Phoenix, but I thought the other one was the Goblet of Fire. And then I got the Prisoner of Azkaban and the Chamber of Secrets. And then we also have Harry Potter, which, yeah, this is a topical time to talk about Harry Potter. So I reread them all, really enjoyed them. 
and then I was in midst the reread and yeah it, it I'm stumbling over not having words Rowling decided it would be a great idea to use her trauma to victimize herself and villainize others and I'm not saying that her trauma isn't valid I understand that when you're really hurt that in your when you're in a hurt you can see everything as villains but that doesn't excuse making people feel like crap especially when you have one of the biggest platforms in history however i do think that these books are great atmospheric they made me so hungry because i read them and all i could want to eat it filled magic it's like children's and like their stories i want to share with children and my children but will they always have a taint now yes i think that it's hard to read books that talk about inclusion that speak against bigger years and something when the author's a hypocrite and obviously all of us are hypocrites but not all of us are so publicly vehement about it that we refuse to back down and see one because that's the thing everyone every author every person will always cause harm but there's a point when you recognize that your harm is not the greatest harm and you say you're sorry and you say i messed up and you choose not to influence toward people hating other people so I think they're going to be some airtime before I reread the series. And I'm really glad that I bought these books secondhand. Well, on that happy note, I am going to wish you adieu and say thank you for watching this. Thank you for joining me in Cringe Lane when I reread these <laughs> terrible videos. Let me never live down the fact. But the thing is, you have to start somewhere. And I started from somewhere and I'm still nowhere near perfect. I still have crappy editing if you light and many other conversations but i'm really happy for these last three years on booktube and i'm very thankful that i've had a chance to read a lot of these books and yeah if you're starting out be encouraged that we will all get better not all of us will hit the aesthetic queen goals but all of us will get better happy reading writing you can see me on social media especially my instagram here the scrivener and my twitter here scrivener actually they don't have the thought on them anyways either way Kira Scrivener, that's my name on all the socials. It's linked below. Goodreads, I write lots of reviews. Instagram, I share many stories and many rants. And I will see you very soon and happy reading and writing.